When I was the only child, people often asked me if I wanted a baby brother or sister. My answer was, I wanted a baby sister. But it's okay if I get a baby brother. I just hope he would be cooperative. Sometime in 2008, I finally convinced Neil's 50-50 thoughts of having another child. When we were both sure that one child was not enough and we could probably afford to have another one, we started praying for it. Lord, if it is your will, please bless us with another child as precious as Sandrine. On December 19, 2008, I underwent surgery as per advice by my doctor to have a polyp removed from my uterus to give room for the baby, she said. Three weeks later, on January 16, 2009, I remember it was a Friday at 4 p.m. I had an appointment with my doctor to get the result of my surgery. I could tell by just looking at her face that something was not right. It was then that I was told that the biopsy came back and I have an endometrial adenocarcinoma, uterine cancer in other words. Needless to say, I couldn't believe what I heard and was shocked. My doctor was nice enough to console me and explain the treatment, which is hysterectomy. It is a surgical removal of the uterus, and she even discussed about the hope. There's still hope, she said, to complete your family by having surrogate mother, as I understand you wanted to have another child. You could imagine how devastating it was for a person who was planning to get pregnant and was told by her doctor that your uterus is broken and it has to be removed. I told her that after all what you have just told me, having another child is the least of my concern. Four days later, after the breaking news with unbelief and with many questions in our minds, May and I went back to her doctor and I wanted to ask her so many questions. I, I, I couldn't believe why, why is this happening? And is, are, are, are the tests really accurate? Are the doctors, are all the um, medical technologists and all the medical personnel very, very sure about it? Because I know May's a very healthy person. I mean, she likes to work out and exercise more than I do. And for something like this to happen to her, it's unimaginable. I asked my doctor if it's possible for me to get another physician, a specialist I hope on the disease to get a second opinion. She kindly referred me to an oncologist at Princess Margaret Hospital. The first time I stepped on the floor at Princess Margaret, I told my husband who was with me at that time, it never occurred to me that the next time I will be in this hospital, I am a patient. When we met with the second, the doctor, um, it was a, I felt a little bit better because we know that this is going to be a second opinion. We know that his opinion um, would be something different from what the original doctor said. And I, I, I'm hoping that he would say something that, you know, everything is fine. I'm really hoping that he will not find anything. I'm hoping that everything will, will just turn around or he will tell us that, you know, go ahead, you know, this is nothing to worry about. This was a very difficult time for me and my family. I can't express the emotions I felt. For those who've been in my shoes, you know what I mean. I woke up in the middle of the night and had trouble putting myself back to sleep. There were many sleepless nights. On those nights, I always found myself on my knees and talking to God. It was then that I found courage, strength, hope, and assurance that I was not alone. I claimed His promises. During those trying episodes of this journey, I suddenly found more time reading my Bible. I searched His words looking for hope, guidance, and answer as to what I should do. You may tell me that I was still in my denial period, but I honestly believe that deep in my heart, there's another child that is meant for us. Somehow, somewhere, something was telling me hysterectomy is not the only treatment. So I asked God, should I follow my doctor and get a hysterectomy? Or follow my heart to find another cure? Maybe, just maybe from natural remedies and from you, 
from you, my God, my creator, and my greatest physician. I ask the opinion of families and friends who are in medical profession and new medical science more than I do. Most of them told me to follow my doctor's advice, which made it harder for me to follow what I was thinking as the divine providence. From the very start, we didn't want to go through the hysterectomy. And for some reason, we had a feeling that God is telling us, try me, you're God, and you will witness a miracle. As if this health crisis was not enough, six weeks after being diagnosed of cancer, on February 27, 2009, I lost my job of more than eight years. What is it that you are telling me, Lord, I ask? Are you preparing me for a long treatment? God's assurance that He is in control must have been given to me at this point because losing a job for the first time in my life didn't bother me at all. I found peace that only God can give. We submitted all our worries into God's hands. He is the master planner and we simply let Him direct our course. When May lost her job, we took that as a blessing rather than adversity because her work will give her more stress while undergoing treatment. And in addition, God has turned this into a real blessing because the servant's package she received had paid up our mortgage. What a wonderful God we serve. His blessings did not stop there though. On March 21, exactly three weeks after her losing her job, she got her MRI result. And guess what they found out? Nothing. Everything was clear. Praise the Lord for that. Now here comes the part where a few may roll their eyes. That's okay. I don't mind sharing my testimony to both skeptics and believers. God himself reached his powerful healing hand into my body on the invitation of my much less than a master in faith and did what the doctors and specialists could not. On September 2009, I went to a walk-in clinic because I wasn't really feeling well at the time. After some evaluation, the doctor asked me for a urine sample. Okay, urine sample. So I gave him the sample and he came back so quickly and told me, Congratulations! You are pregnant! You could imagine the reaction I asked him. Are you sure? Don't get me wrong, I do believe in miracle, but I was just stunned and surprised to know that I was pregnant because at that time, I was under medication as prescribed by my oncologist and the pill that I was taking at that time, according to him, is a contraceptive pill. That's one of its side effects, so I wasn't really supposed to get pregnant. My wife's pregnancy was not a smooth ride, but God helped us through it all. On her first trimester, I drove her to the emergency almost every week for ultrasound due to subchronic hemorrhage, but every ultrasound came back with heartbeat, doing fine. And every time, all I said was, praise the Lord. On April 27, 2010, at 10.38 a.m., almost a year and four months after being diagnosed with stage one endometrial carcinoma and our hope of having another child was snuffed out as doctors advised me of hysterectomy. The God we serve demonstrated his extreme kindness and grace to us by giving us a wonderful and healthy child. Despite all the difficulties we faced, God made the way and turned all our crises into blessings. Sharice, which means having grace and kindness, a perfect name for our child, as we have experienced the grace and kindness that God has bestowed upon us through all the rough experiences that came our way. All I can say is, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. When the oblivious asked me 
if God ever listens to our prayers. Or the atheists and agnostics ask me, how do you know if God really exists? I like to tell them my little story.